All right, Bonehawks, this video is all about Mortal Kombat 1. About to sit down with my good friend Hater, friend of the channel. I'll link his YouTube down below. Not making content consistently, but uh, got some really good stuff on there. There's been a lot of criticism on Mortal Kombat 1, a little bit more than, than normal lately, and we kind of wanted to chat a bit on that topic and kind of say, like, how much is how much is helpful, how much is hurtful. And then we just kind of go on for a couple different topics about the game in general and how it compares to the other ones, so... Hope you enjoy this type of thing. Let me know if you want to see this more. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Accept your death. So one of the talking points I've seen a lot lately is like the criticism of Mortal Kombat 1 and like uh, kind of led by Pig of the Hut from what I've seen. is just kind of saying like, you know, that being critical of MK1 is fine and everything like that, but... There are some people out there that uh, I've seen kind of make it their entire personality or their or their whole thing about this game in particular. There's other things as well, but like... Well, At least I, lately, right? Even yeah. if it hasn't always been that way, like the last few months especially. Yeah, so it's like, what is like a... Because I agree that like we should be critical of things like as we see them, but like what do you think is like a healthy kind of like mix of things like i know there's some people that are just waiting for the net code to be fixed that won't even touch the game they'll go on then they'll test it out and say oh this game still sucks fix your game on to the next thing kind of thing like where 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 do you think there's like a helpful amount of criticism for the game i'll start that by saying that nrs shorters make it hard to be an nrs fan sometimes so i feel like <laughs> in general we're kind of just like dumped on by the fighting game community at large and people are always shitting all over the game and man mk1 hasn't been doing itself any favor in that regards right it makes it really hard to like stick up for and it's like when you, like, you agree with <laughs> yep. all these things and in this kind of like recent golden era of fighting games there's so much to compare it to which just makes it that much worse right so i get it and it's I'm a consumer and I paid money for this, right? Think of like anything else you would spend 70 to 100 whatever dollars, whatever edition that you bought, right? Like, like, would you just say nothing or would you just say like, well, maybe they'll fix it like with a firmware update or maybe they'll, you know, give me free shipping when I return it or however you like <laughs> kind of like. There's a point where you start like rationalizing to yourself. People categorize as like toxic positivity, right? They yeah. definitely haven't done themselves any favors but, well uh, i mean even since I, launch right like the the amount of things missing and i mean we can go into our own criticisms after this i'm just like more in general right of like it, you're right it, it has been hard to to stick up like, for this game the, the tone lately on social media like youtube and then like the discourse on twitter like you were talking about there was that tweet that went like semi-viral or something and yep people made response videos and you even got called out on it, right? Because you commented on. <laughs> I it. did. I got. I got. Quite, I can't repeat the comment on here, <laughs> but it All was right. uh, pretty intense. People get right. uh, pretty heated about that kind of stuff, and I mean, again, it's like you do. It's critic. It. It's. It's a franchise that we all like. We. We don't want to see this game fail. At least I feel that's the consensus with everybody. We want to see the game succeed, and like going out and pointing out the things that are wrong with it or the things that are missing or the things that aren't quite there yet are definitely helpful. And in addition to calling out the things that they did good, you know, things like make balance changes or character designs or stuff like that, right? So I think, you know, kind of having them hand in hand without kind of swaying one way to the other is kind of the more, the more useful way of doing it in my opinion at least if i'm looking at it from nrs outwards you know seeing like okay there we are doing this let's keep doing more of this but we're missing this and i think for the large part they're aware of what they're missing <laughs> for the it's large a matter part. of resources right like where i work trying to literally get anything done if it has to do with it that requires like opening a ticket in a jira and then waiting until they have the funding in q2 of next year and then that gets pushed because like something else is demanding like a priority and things like that. I'm sure that's what caused the delay in the, uh, the desync issue being fixed. Like it just like took so long, things like oh, that, 100%. right? Competing priorities. They already have resources into something else. We know that they work on other WB things that aren't just their own stuff, right? They have credits on the Harry Potter game yep. and I don't know what else. And I don't know how they're contributing to that or how they're getting credited or, or whatever, but 
I'll be like completely transparent and say like I'm I'm mainly thinking about like MK Tom Brady like without a doubt. Yeah, right? like I think when so. I I made a comment that it just sounds like J Jonah Jameson complaining about Spider Man, right? I'm just gonna turn on the mic and then I'm gonna be mad about something today, and I feel <laughs> like I feel like he's the personality type that thinks that sounding mad and emotional means that he's passionate and stuff, right? But it turns in like this kind of like dog pile and he starts to get identified by it he actually made a video recently right a response to that pig of the the hut thing and he's like i he's like somebody said that i've been just complaining about mortal Kombat for the last 15 years he's like i don't think that's fair because of this and so he made this whole video basically defending himself his his defense of like not being that guy right but I mean, I think that he has some self-awareness because his tone has changed as of recently, right? He doesn't want to be, it's like half sarcastic. No, I got to be positive, but also like, okay, I definitely don't want to be, you know, that quote unquote, that guy, like sort of thing. So it's, it's... I, I expect things to get better, like overall. I feel like that's a lot of the driving narrative and a lot of people are exhausted by it. And even just you and I talking about this, right? Spending the first however many minutes of this podcast talking about it, people are probably just ready to move on from, you know? Yeah, and I think we're. I'm. I'm. I'm hoping that we're getting to a point with the game where they're at where they would hoped it was on release, because we've reached like the six month point kind of a thing. And and I think that maybe this is, will have one or two big updates. Will get us to where it is, and then we can put all this in the past. And then this is a game that we have and add on going forward and that that where type you, of thing. Where do you feel like people at large finally like lost hope? Stuff. I feel like it was around like the tremor patch is when a lot of people like that was kind of like their last hope it's right it's, if there wasn't some sort of big change or big patch that came along with that they were like ready to kind of like just call it yeah like i've <laughs> in my opinion i see it in kind of like like points you know like the initial point was just you open the game up for the first time on release day and it's like where is literally half the stuff that's usually in this game like why and then it's like okay well Maybe that's coming later, blah, blah, blah. So that was like point one. And then they had the tournament at ECT that I went to. And like, I thought the attendance was quite low for it. And then they had like the, the, um, the pro league announced like a week before that tournament. And it's like, how are people supposed to get out to this event if they just knew about it a week before? So I feel like that was a point. And then like, after that, I would say the first patch where they just gutted Cyrax was not popular with a lot of players. And a lot of people wanted to see more things buffs and not nerfs. Uh, to be fair, ECT was all Cyrax, so like it is what it is. And then, right. And then I think the final two, like like anyone who was like on the fence about it, was like the uh, pay fatalities, like the seasonal fatalities. Oh, that was that yeah. was just the premium shop in general. But the fatalities was like, all right, ten dollars for a voice hack or ten dollars for a skin that's arguably like not even you know that good not to mention that it's more than twice the price of skins and like equivalent sorts of like games and stuff right yeah and then you're you're charging me for a fatality and then they gave no 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 it's all three yeah sure it's yeah all three. okay, okay. Right, that was right. yeah. that was so crazy like the thing that your game yeah, is totally literally known for that. I yeah. Blocked that out. yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's i think that would have lost like a big chunk of people and then the final thing i would say for anyone that was like still holding on was like the desync issue and for how long that went on for that just ruined the online experience for so many people that I think that would have been like the catalyst to like, like for me, like I know I'm going to play this game. I enjoy playing this game and I know what it is and I'm not going to drop off at any point. But for pe other people that were like, you know, like, eh, I don't really know about this, including a lot of MK fans who I know who have, you know, stopped playing the game completely that don't want to see it fail, but like, I'm not supporting this. And I can't really say I blame them to be honest, but I feel like that, that desync was like, that was the, that was the cut and no maybe they'll come back depending on what happens with the game in the future but i don't know so those are like my points of where i th i feel like you know your faith is slowly dwindling down like we, we i still have no idea what the warrior shrine is if i had to guess at this point i would say it's probably equivalent to like the little lobbies that they have in like street fighter and tekken maybe I I thought somebody had mute. Didn't they have something like that in MK11? Some I saw somebody mentioned somewhere that it was like the um, like combat league rankings, and it's like your little statue from like MK1, right, with the fighters, like the stone statues right. that were in the combat or, or in the crypt. 
in MK11 that it was going to be something like that based on combat league rankings or something. I was like, that kind of like makes sense. And then I'm not too butthurt about that being missing if that is what it is. But yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure if, if I, I think there are a lot of theories, but I, I don't remember NRS actually saying anything specific about it. I could be wrong. Maybe I missed it in a combat cast or something, but I don't, don't really remember them mentioning the warrior shrine much or at all <laughs> to be honest not even say like you'll find out what it is soon kind of a thing it's just kind of this thing that's existed there you know in the in the spirit of the discussion right and we'll give nrs the benefit of the doubt and for all the five for every five bad things we just said we have to say one good thing oh okay so that's probably like one thing for you and so two for me i don't know so, okay, so what I will say that's that's good about MK1, and I think this is kind of like what's been said across the board, is the gameplay is fun. There are some things that are stupid, like Raiden Kano is stupid. I hope that goes away. That's not fun at all. But in general, the gameplay is fun. And I've seen people, including yourself, who have even moved away and come back for a short time and had, and had some, some enjoyment with it. So, I mean, the gameplay itself, I feel, is fun, and it's not really a chore to play too much outside of a couple matchups but that could also be quan chi things because that's just you know i'm playing quan chi so he's uh i think right, he's solid right. mid-tier at this at this point though but like yeah i think that would be like the number one solid thing that i would say what a down player dink and dink, dink out here down playing i mean quan's doing well out in tournaments there i will say that so <laughs> but <laughs> he's got some broke stuff we, we, we could talk about that his specifics and stuff like that later but sure, like yeah. so that's like my main thing i would say is the gameplay is fun so uh, and 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 yourself what's what would you say that they're doing right as opposed to all the things we could go on about about them doing wrong I feel like they're on the right track for a lot of things. Like, the cameos seem to be getting better and better and better. What, what I'm worried about, well, I don't want to say anything negative when I'm supposed to be saying positive things, right? It does nice. seem like the cameo thing is becoming a little bit more. You're seeing, like, cameo, like, Chameleon just, like, makes every character better, right? Like, I don't think that Chameleon would be a bad pick with liter literally any character on the roster. Agreed. Like, she can bring something to the table for everybody. Um uh, and what she brings to the table for like worse characters or like lower tiered characters or whatever is like is is really good and it's just gonna kind of like leave in the dust it's just <laughs> it turns this pattern of making other cameos irrelevant right uh we'll talk about that with like cyrax stuff uh i will say that if i know how to find my little i know what makes me mad about the game so and I know how to avoid that now. So I just know how to find my little pockets of fun as like a time killer and be just super casual about it, but like know enough about it to like keep up and stuff, but nothing that I'm grinding or anything like that. And if it does come around and it does kind of like flesh out, it's like, I'm not anxious about that and I'm not angry about it. Not anymore. I feel like there's just too many other things to do <laughs> with that energy. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's not a shot at like anybody. I just feel like I could literally be doing anything else with my time rather than being mad about something that I'm not doing. I just think we have a certain sorts of expectations and it's natural to feel disappointed or even especially if you paid money for it. And I think um, that's, yeah, that's a main criticism too, is like a lot of this stuff wouldn't be that big of a deal if it was like a free to play game or whatever, but like at AAA title price, it's kind of like, meh, you know? It's like a free to play business model, right? Then like Rochan, but like, Dude, just every game is doing it these days. It's just the way that, that things are. And until people just stop participating in it, it's just not going to go away. That's the only thing that matters to literally any company, any any corporate overlord or whatever is a number at the bottom of an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Right? Like with no context in the vacuum of like whatever, just whatever this tangible number is. So... Dollars, dollars, dollars. So I, I do want to kind of go on about how MK compares to the other uh, current fighting games that are out there right now. Uh, you mentioned you, the Cyrax thing. Do you want to go over that first or do you want to do that afterwards? Let's talk about not, not just Cyrax, but so what was Cyrax bringing to the table besides just damage through combo extensions? It was mainly like the horizontal helicopter. Yeah, damage, thing, right? chip, was... meter build. Damage, chip, meter build, making things that are insanely unsafe, things that should kill you, completely safe, sometimes even advantageous on block or punishing your opponent for trying to punish you too early, things like that. Yeah. And 
you saw that and it's just that's what once like the week one of experimentation and all that sort of stuff i feel like the dust started to settle and you started to see people try to do that with every single character it was definitely like the very obvious thing once <clears throat> once it was like a worm in everybody's ear right and seeing it all on streams and stuff in that tournament <laughs> yeah oh my that gosh. was a catalyst for for sure like uh but it, it was funny how quickly they patched it though like it like the tournament was over literally the monday it was patched it was gone like it's but like they were already planning to do it yeah right? it was... i don't think they watched the tournament and said like that's no. not gonna fly right they already knew it was a the thing they're already gonna do it but they didn't want to mess with anybody before the tournament is that's my fan fiction or whatever, right? That's what I'd like to think happened, and it wasn't. <laughs> I don't other way around. I don't think they would have been able to make those changes that quickly and in schedule my opinion. a patch. And exactly. Patch and stuff. Yeah, I, mean, I don't I, think I, that's. I, I think that was maybe like a day one patch that they were just behind on, and they were just like, okay, well, it is what it is. We'll see what happens this weekend, and it'll be gone by the morning. So. Well, and then you see, like, the last patch, Stry Striker got a little bit of a hit on the grenades, the recharge right. time on, on the grenades and stuff like that. And I saw Tekken Master complaining about that, and then I saw Kadeem respond to it, so sounds like pause. Yeah. yeah. If you guys don't know what uh, who he is, he's a... He, I would call him, like, he definitely... I didn't know who he was to, like, Injustice 2, but that's when I really started paying, like, attention to, like, everything was like that era and he was definitely like the premier green arrow in that game as far as i'm concerned i remember uh, going with a couple others like costner i remember going to canada cup for injustice 2 and like i knew that he was going and i trained like against green arrow with uh, illusions like i trained that matchup like mm -hmm. crazy because i didn't want to lose it and then i'm <laughs> playing illusions and he's like Bro, you've won 35 games in a row. I don't think this matchup is going to be that bad for you. <laughs> that's so funny. And then he's like, I'm going to switch to a different character because that's this grind is not fun for me. <laughs> I'm like, that's that's fair. But that's that was like one of my first memories with, with Paws. And I think they're doing well. Him and, uh, him and his girlfriend, wife, I'm not sure. They're doing like a Twitch Twitch streams all the time. Some YouTube, YouTube. stuff. So Yeah, they have a... Kind of moved into anyway, content bring creation. Anyway, I I bring up Kadeem because he responded to the Tekken Master tweet, and this is where I really started to kind of like think about it. And he's like, basically, I'm paraphrasing here. It's like, why are we complaining about things like the the striker thing being, uh, you know, nerfed? Uh, when all of these cameos and the way that people use them, they all do the same thing, right? Yeah. Kano knives to keep your negative stuff safe and maybe take a turn back and punish your opponent for the trouble of trying to punish you. Right? Yeah. And that's what grenades do. And yep. That's what Goro Up Punch does. You <laughs> right. know, it's like all these cameos doing, but that's what the meta is, right? And that's what Cyrex was doing. And it's just these cameos, and that's how people play this game, like even in, like at a high level. And that's what wins. I just saw a Ninja Killer playing Raiden Kano. You know, right. that is there. And you can't give anybody a hard time for doing that. You play no, to God. win, yeah, even you play if to win. you know that it's bland. And I think. It's not the most interesting stuff to watch. I feel like I no, was just listening but... to cat, Ketchup or Mustard complain about it yesterday on the stream. <laughs> Comparing it to pizza, right? Eating cheese pizza every day. It's just tomato sauce and, and melted cheese on bread. You eat it every day. Then you open up the fridge that's full of like all this fresh produce, you know, eggs and juices and stuff like that. But you're complaining that there's nothing to eat. Like where where's the pizza, right? Like the same thing you have every day. <laughs> it's an interesting like analogy. Saying. And so I feel like it's being felt from like a lot of levels. And I think the nerf to Cyrax is maybe that's what they were trying to prevent. But it's true that they're multiple, they, they're all filling the, the, the same roles. Yeah. And um, I feel that's why like Chameleon and Janet really like shook things up a bit because they're doing things that are a little bit different um, as opposed to what a lot of the cameos are doing. But not like arbitrary different, right? Like I feel like they're really well thought out. Um, yeah, 100%. I'm excited to see the rest of the DLC cameos and see kind of what they do I want to see with what them. Fair is like, what is Fair going to be like? If this is what Chameleon and Janet uh, are like, I wonder what Fair is going to be like. Imagine if you like activate her and she just like chills on your shoulders like during the match, and, and then you just give you like a whole new moveset. If, That'd be so if, cool. If she has her version of like the command grab from MKX, where she is it the command grab with the animation where she stabs you in the eyes and throws you? Is that part of her x-ray? I feel like oh. an eye stab command grab would be super sick. If I had to... We don't have grabs in any cameos. 
right? Well, just the forward throw that everybody does, but no, like cameo moves. That, that's a grab. Oh man, that that scares me. A command grab imagine, cameo? <laughs> oh no! Give a command grab to literally any every. I feel single like character. they've done worse. I feel like there's characters that can do worse than that. Right? Yeah, I mean that's true. Some of the stuff I've been seeing lately is kind of gross. But I mean, command grab cameo. That's crazy. I, I if I had to guess, like I think Farah probably has like a move where she runs up your back and does like a like Annie era type of thing. I bet she'll have that attack. I used to play her when I was like super casual when MK X first came out, like casual, casual, just like whatever. I used to, I thought that she was so fun. I used to play her all the time or play Ferator all the time just because she she cracked me up. I liked the way that that character was. They could written. they could completely go the other way with it too, and like because Farah is supposed to grow up and be big, big like Tor, right? So they could right. go that route and then have her be this big brute instead of you know this tiny little character there, there's a couple of different ways they could do that yeah mo modern Farah, Farah all grown up Farah hit puberty and now here we are <laughs> yeah exactly right so i don't know i love speculating on those types of things that's and that's part of what i've talked about this before is that's what makes it fun is like for upcoming things and that's another thing to speak to what nrs has done is they they, they always have like things that are like anticipated like they, they're pretty good at picking out like exciting type things to like for you to look forward to and you know even from when MK1 was first launched all the way up or from first announced story up until when it was launched, you know, they did a good job kind of stringing things along and making you excited and anticipated for things. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing on launch, I, but we've been there already. So, I mean, I feel like we've all been in those personal relationships where you feel like you don't get any attention and you're neglected and, you know, they're argumentative or just completely silent and absent, and you know it's just an inevitability. Like, why are you even like wasting your time with this person? Right, you're already mentally trying to like plan like your 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 next steps, but then all it takes is that one good day, and you get that attention you need, and that little ego stroke, and yep. it's like a battery that sustains you, and that's like what one patch will do. Right, and that's the. I feel like that's the state that we're in right now like you're just kind of like just communication so bad the only time you hear from them is like the days leading up to a dlc it's true the way they the way they hype things or they don't hype things like i see happen with these other fighting games it's just yeah i mean it is what it is like I, it's nothing i get like mad over it's just like something that i noticed and it would be nice to see the mk version of that you know of those things yeah i i haven't really been paying attention to the other fighting game communities as much so i don't really know how communication is handled there as opposed to nrs but i feel like that's a good that's a good like um segue into the next the next statement here which is like mk versus street fighter and tekken like all three of them kind of came out mk sandwiched in the middle two of them clearly more <laughs> complete than the other but i haven't been pay paying much attention to what's kind of happened with them like since their launch i did see that Tekken is getting some sort of a Tekken battle pass or something. Yeah. And some people, the, people had some thoughts Eddie. about that. Yeah. Well, Street Fighter has that as well. And it's like nothing that the way that it works in Street Fighter anyway, it's just something that, because I just ignored that shit. I just didn't do anything with the battle pass in Street Fighter. But as right. I'm playing against Carl and Noodles and whomever doing ranked and all that stuff. I'm building up all these points and I'm leveling up the battle pass and I was grinding Street Fighter 6 so much back then but by the time I got to the later stages of just the free battle pass that you don't even buy you end up you end up getting the currency towards the the you end up getting the currency that happens to be the equivalent of what you need to purchase the premium part of it and get those rewards like sort of right thing. So I didn't pay anything for like that first Street Fighter Battle Pass, the first and the second one. I don't know how this one's going to work. And I feel like this is just how games work these days. And it's it's annoying. Like, I don't know if it's annoying in like a super predatory uh, consumer uh, versus enterprise -like sort of way, which, you know, Don't Roast Me, it obviously kind of like is on that spectrum, even if you don't truly believe that it's like malicious like sort of thing. No, I kind of I but, kind of agree. 
but is it that or is it just kind of like a get off my lawn old man yells at cloud it's just the world modernizing and moving in a direction that's making something that i liked and was really like accustomed to and used to irrelevant <laughs> you know yeah and that, I th is it which, which side is that or is it a blend of both of those things i think it depends on how you do it because i with as you were saying with street fighter and the same with uh, another unrelated game hell divers people were saying that like there is a battle pass but by just playing the game you can get enough currency to just purchase the battle pass in game with the in-game currency and i think if you can do it that way we're like yeah maybe you have to grind a little bit but like you get rewarded for playing the game with the actual battle pass i think that but there is, is the like right fear of it. missing out and those sorts of psychological things and you know which is why people think that it's predatory. I'll, I'll tell you, like, the Street Fighter Six one, like, all I would have missed out on is, like, stickers for the chat. Right. Like I didn't feel like there was, like, really, like, anything to... But I don't know how it is these days. I haven't been around those parts, like, in a while. But it's something I've ever got hung up on, but I don't really prefer it. I don't like it. Yeah, and I mean, I saw this, like, years ago when uh, my son was younger and into Fortnite. And, you know, he'd be super proud because he had like a season one skin and you can't get that anymore. And everyone was like, right. see, see his season one skin and be like, Oh man, like you're an OG, blah, 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 blah. And like, so like, I kind of get things like that, but I also get the other side of what you're talking about. The fear of missing out. That's like, if I don't get this skin, I'll never be able to get it again, you know, type of thing. So like, but Mate. that that exists in like other forms, right? Like I remember when I first started playing World of Warcraft, I was like, "Oh my god, I will never see tier seven gear. Holy shit, that looks so cool!" But I'll never get it. I how am I gonna get organized with you know ten people and stuff? I end up like meeting people and all that stuff. But it's the same sort of thing. And that's when a lot of people that I was raiding with, like I, this is like two thousand nine ish, right? Like later right. With Wrath of the Lich King sort of like content and we had a bunch of people on our raid uh just stop playing the game because anyone could get tier gear so just man that's why i raid i just want to look yeah. cooler like it is the kind of like prize right like and i get it know? but i mean if there's not like a good spread then like what's the point like the thing with like with the gear in, in mk is like you got like melina and scorpion and sub-zero who have like a billion different gear pieces and like Quan who has like six skins and it's like i want my DLC, quan to be like individualized never gets anything i was i was thinking about that when we were playing justice yesterday right like the premium skins or premier skins or whatever they are and they all have like one line of dialogue and one thing they'll say in a clash and right. you know things like that like i feel like dlc in mkx the dlc didn't even talk didn't tanya <laughs> have like one line yeah uh, did she she uh, said something they had intros i think but like that was it in mk the mk9 dlc they didn't even have that's right that's the one like no one talked no right? one talked no one Scar no voice line. scarlet's vo uh little grunts and stuff were just made yeah. up like electronically and like i think they had a laugh for freddy krueger and that was it that's like, there was right. no dialogue that's but... what i was thinking of but even like the look at the dlc in uh like mkx the kind of maybe it didn't get so bad I, injustice 2 was very obvious to me and yeah. i feel like even having Quan in the seasons of invasions like something they don't really i don't expect to see any dlc stuff in there there's no omniman stuff in there and no peacemaker stuff in there not that i'm aware of anyway i don't even know what they would do with omniman from watching the show i mean he's got all the skins that make sense for him i don't really know what else you give him at this point i, I get this the show's still Dude, going but him... You give him, like, E. Honda's outfit three from Street Fighter Six, like he's on vacation in Hawaii or whatever. <laughs> what? You put him, like, in a Hawaiian shirt with, like, the hat and the camera around his neck and stuff. The, uh, that would be that would be fun. The jury that's, pajamas? And that's, no, that would be too much. That's uh, I like the way that Street Fighter does their skins, because some of them just don't make sense. And it, but it's it's cool. It looks good. Like the jury pajamas, for example. Things like that. MK doesn't really tend to do that as much from what i remember the jury pajamas i bet is the best selling skin for any fighting game character in the history of fighting games i bet you that alone financed the the grand prize of a million dollars at capcom cup or whatever i mean i'm embellishing or whatever i mean i, that, I bought I it that that's all i'm saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but i mean i think things like that like speaking of that because that's something that's really interesting is that in the MKX days, like they had the skins that they'd sell, and those funds would go specifically to tournaments from those skins. And why they've right. never done that since is like, like blows my mind. Like I know from um, talking to people that were around at the time that like those skins fund three seasons of that uh, whatever the league that they were doing with the ESL. Like it, it funded all three seasons with just those skins. So they've shown that that could be highly successful. So if like 
WB doesn't want to allocate the funds to like fund the the pro league, then just do something like that. You know, it's like a crowdfunding kind of a way to do it, and you get some cool skins out of it too, right? So I mean, I don't I don't think NRS can do anything as far as monetization in this game, whether it's pro circuit or skins or things like that, without the WB sort of maybe not the pro circuit right but the the financing it through in game sorts of things and i think that's kind of like what it's turned into like we've we've all seen i would say in the like last five years you've seen this like in the workplace and you've seen it socially and like all these sorts of things where things there's a lot of luxuries that used to be there that aren't there anymore and I feel like the way that businesses think a lot more these days, it gets worse and worse and worse every year. It's like, why would we put a skin out like that and charge money for it and then just give it to something else when we can just keep it, right? It's just yeah. another way to make money. So make that fucking Deadly Alliance Sub-Zero skin with a super anemic clone or whatever. That just makes me laugh every time. Oh, I man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God. I hope I someone got fired for that MK blunder. Tom Brady earlier when that skin came out. He's like, I finally... <laughs> I finally got a Sub Zero skin without a fucking man bun, and the clone is fucking anorexic. He was so <laughs> mad about it. Like, oh, my oh my god! Yeah, that is uh, that is kind of kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I um, finally got a skin without a man bun. Oh, anyway, I think that's like the state of affairs there. And and I will say that like. One thing that's kind of annoying on the MK1 front, I will say, especially compared to Street Fighter and Tekken, is like not being able to like practice different characters at different levels. Like you have to create like we saw Tweety when the game first came out creating whole new IDs just to to level up a different character. Bro, literally whenever Street Fighter 6 came out, I was like, "Oh, this is so cool. They got lobbies, they got character rankings when MK comes out." I'm gonna use lobbies to do a never ending stream. I'm gonna use character rankings to grind a bunch of different character rankings. And this game comes out and it has none of that, bro. And so what I'm doing is I'm making a bunch of different accounts so then I can circumvent that a little bit and do like kind of like my own kind of character rankings with these Elder God runs. So like even earlier today, like I was playing some invasions and like I was trying to learn these different characters because every once in a while you have to go through and like, do a brutality with somebody or a fatality with somebody right and you don't have it unlocked at like level so it'd be nice to like have a different kind of you know like leveling system for them i'm like okay well i can't get through this because i don't know enough about the character that maybe i just jump online and try some casual games with them but my casual games are based on my overall record so i'm not going to get anybody that's the same skill level as me with this character not only learn. that you're tanking your own record exactly right, with your overall sort of thing just add into that l column I mean, if you care about that sort of stuff, and a lot of people are, like, even if they don't get hung up on it, it's like, why would I add to it so unnecessarily? Yeah, and it's it just seems unnecessary. And I mean, they totally saw that this was a thing with Street Fighter before their game even launched. So, I mean, I don't really know the specifics of log logistics and all that kind of stuff of how putting something like that in, but it's uh, it's definitely something that is missed for sure when I when I play MK as opposed to... Even when I, play, I mean, I only played one character in Street Fighter and like my five hours with Tekken was just with Lily. So I didn't really plan to play other characters, but in MK, it would be nice to, especially since I'm competing in the game and I kind of want to see where their holes are. I, I always say that like the best way to learn to fight a character is play as a character and then you can see how, what other people are doing to kind of beat it, right? Exactly, yeah. So to, not being able to have like an easy access to doing that is is quite frustrating in my my opinion I, maybe i'm overthinking it but i really don't think i i am so and you know even hearing tweety talk about it too so i don't know that's that's something big that i think they missed especially compared to the uh street fighter and tekken it's frustrating because they used to be the standard right and the reason that a lot of the modern fighting games have these sorts of things are because they were setting the precedent for that right <laughs> yeah and now they're just left left in left in the dust it's it's but... so funny we were talking about this last time it's like as soon as you see somebody start to praise the previous game you know it's you know it's ggs for the current one like when you see people saying like mk11 was better and i'm remembering how many people were just so done with that game and just wanted to move on to something else? It's so bland. It's so boring. It's poke throw. That's blah, blah, how blah. Injustice Two was, and that's like that's it's the like cycle. every game. And this, this is also a consequence 
of their business model of the two-year game cycle because things don't get fleshed out enough because they don't even have a chance to before they're retired on and they're, you know, uh, getting ready to launch the the next thing. But they're constantly in just as they try to do the legacy sort of thing, but for Mortal Kombat, just reinventing the wheel every single time. And that's got of like, imagine if all these characters, like Sub-Zero's always got a slide. He's always got an ice ball, like those sorts yeah. of like trademark sorts of things. But he, they don't really carry over like moves outside of like specials, like normals. Things don't ever work the same sort of way. The whole game sort of like, they're just always try building up from like nothing, right? And like carrying over very little besides like character identity sorts of sorts of things. Yeah, and if you would have uh, taken like MK11 Sub Zero and plopped them into MK1 with a cameo system, okay. and what like you know something like that, for example, you already got the character model. Maybe make a couple couple things that maybe don't don't work with the cameos as well and change it a little bit, but for the overall, keep them. Kind of well, the same, it's right? like right after the launch period of the game, people already have short timer syndrome. They're already romanticizing the previous game, and we already know like how it was up until the cycle was broken, right? That another game is coming, you know, in a in like two years. So I'll just wait for that one. This one sucks. I'm just waiting for that one, right? And you know, bouncing like between whatever, and it's not like what Street Fighter players had to do with Street Fighter V, and that game had a shit launch. And anybody will tell you that. And they just... Yep. Some people dropped the game, but Street Fighter players, like, a lot of them, like, stuck with it. It did get better, right? They were... Uh, people talk about all the time the contrast between Street Fighter V launch versus the very final patch before Street Fighter VI came out. And it's, like, night and day. And they think that Street Fighter V turned into an awesome game. Yeah, I think I've heard that, you know, and I'm I'm hoping the same for MK1 it too. Took five years for that though, right? These games, that's more than twice as long as any NRS games ever lived. <laughs> that's true, and MK1 did take the longest to make out of any previous NRS game before. With the four, was it four years between games? And I mean, I I've definitely speculated. And I think even Ed Boon has been on record kind of saying that at one point they were kind of there was injustice right they're working towards injustice and they're like well we don't want to go this long without an mk game so let's just switch switch gears and make it into mk and i think that's what kind of caused a lot of what we have now is that switch midway while still trying to push it through right well my my fan fiction like how i think that this like went went down is that they knew that they were going to need whatever the game after Mortal Kombat 11 was, was going to have to be, that was going to be the last game on that engine. And they were going to need extra, they were going to need the time to make a new engine and build a game around it and stuff like that for whatever the next installment was, where it's like, wow, what a perfect opportunity to let everyone know that Mortal Kombat 1 will be the first game that we, <clears throat> that will have more than the two year life cycle, right? It'll be our longest serviced Mortal Kombat game. And it barely was. They held her that promise. Yeah. But I think that COVID really fucked things up. And we'll never I know for that, sure which sucks. I'm not sure that they knew how much time the engine thing was going to take. And they were probably, when they were making assets and all that sort of stuff in preparation for it, they were probably working under the presumption that it was going to be injustice, but it was maybe still up in the air after COVID and all that other sorts of bullshit. I just feel like there's way too much in and just to see sorts of things in Mortal Kombat 1. Right. I feel like the cameo idea, the assist idea in general, I feel like would fit uh, yeah. their idea of like an Injustice 3 sort of thing. And you get like way more of the requested comic book characters. There's just so many, right, across the, that IP. I mean, there's a lot of Mortal Kombat characters and stuff as well, but not, not, not compared to DC, obviously. Not nearly as that. And then the lore that could kind of go behind it too, like Batman working with like some sort of, you know, villain as his cameo or whatever they choose to call it in the injustice i mean that'd be a cool idea if they chose to go that way like it says like a marvel kind of game but on the dc side of things which would be pretty cool but that's not what right. we got <laughs> i don't know if that's what they're building but that's not what we got um no no do you remember like when people were thinking that we were going to get mk versus marvel yes i do remember that there was a and even like i think even ed boone kind of I don't. Th I wouldn't say he hinted at it. But he kind of he nudged the idea a little bit on on Twitter and just saying, "Oh, that would be a cool idea, wouldn't it?" Kind of a thing. Yeah, you know? he definitely peed on the fire a little bit, flam with flammable pee. <laughs> with but... Flammable pee. He pit man pisses gasoline. I I gotta tell you though, yeah. like 
I, if there's one person I do kind of feel sorry for in all this, it is Ed Boon. Like, this is his baby. And, like, to see how the response to this has been and, like, to see his, like, utter Twitter silence. Like, I know over the years how much of a troll he loves to be to the community and, like, how involved he likes to be. But, like, to see him how silent he is on saying, like, much of anything at all. And, like, he'll put out, like, a couple tweets every time something's released or, like, focus, like, a combo that someone's done or that kind of thing. But, man... I just it breaks my heart to just see like there's, how there's too this... many things wrong with the game. Yeah. Right. At this point in Mortal Kombat 11, people are complaining about like variations and characters being dry and not getting their DLC. Right now, people are still complaining about like no online practice mode or they they just fixed the desync issue and then now the Janet patch has how many people are complaining about online latency right now? Ever since the Janet yep. patch. Uh, yeah, myself like, included. Dude, even the menus feel sluggish to me. Like, I was messing around with it earlier. Just even going through, like, character select feels like you can feel the latency. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what happened there, but some, something definitely changed. It, it feels very choppy. Like, not even, like, I, want, I don't really want to say laggy because it doesn't really feel laggy, but it feels really choppy. It's not smooth. Something happened there, and then... Hopefully it gets addressed soon, sooner rather than later. And I don't even know how big of a thing it is. Hopefully when we're not stuck with it for like a month and a half, like we were with the desync issue. It's so funny because we were playing Injustice 2 a little bit yesterday, we right? Were? And I'm so used to like, whenever I go back to Injustice 2, I always think to myself like, man, I cannot believe I played in this netcode. Like I remember right. thinking like, it was so good. and it's not bad, but it's just like, it definitely, you can tell how much like uh slower things feel in injustice netcode than like say like mk11 um they're they're different i would mk11 has its own sorts of like problems but i feel like every time i go back to injustice 2 it's just like oh my god what is this netcode but when we were playing it yesterday i didn't even notice it until no. i started playing mk1 again later and i was like man <laughs> right. what the fuck is this netcode <laughs> like <laughs> like a down like mk11 like what like that all in all, that was like a, a it, the gameplay I will say is a little, was a little bit bland, but like the package as a whole was good. Like the abilities, like the gear, the the towers, the crypts. The crypt was like fantastic. That was a lot of fun. A little short. I would have liked to see them add on to it. But I mean, I feel like as a complete game, MK11 was good. The net code was good. They had crossplay for a little bit, although I limited. Feel, I feel like NRS puts way too much time and way too many assets, way too many like human work hours and things like that into things to put into the game that lose their novelty after you've seen it one time right like a fatality or like that whole cryptic spirit like you got through the entire crypt or whatever then what like how many people went in there and smashed their hammer or like looking for go ghosts or coins or whatever or you filled up the chest to go through it all over again and how many iterations of that or trying to time the collector shop it just like loses its novelty so fast and the replayability and like invasions are i feel of of all of the shortcomings of mortal kombat one i feel like that is like the universal like yeah <laughs> one that people are just like please like i would have just rather had no single player content almost like this is just yeah it's it's just so like cut and paste and like if they had like different messes or whatever like every season or something like that but just like shuffling like like the the order of them and like oh we're changing the camera around whoa whole new experience you know it's just it's a grind that i don't really want to do <laughs> unfortunately and it's uh i get that they're trying to change things and have season of this season of that and like the, the small little lore bits they do throw in there like at the end of whatever one that you get to like sure like that's it's kind of fun whatever but like it's it's just a, they don't mix it up enough to, to be like a really enjoyable game mode you know i would have preferred a crypt that i play through once and like see you later rather than whatever the heck this it is it's not an enjoyable time I, in my opinion i agree it's a bit of a failure as a uh as a new game mode makes me sad i was excited for it originally and i feel like to add insult to injury in there is like this it's the same problem with the gear and injustice too Whereas, like, there's a million billion things, but so many of those things just have, like, s such slight little variations. Why do the both of these need to exist, and why is it taking up space, and why is it, you know, like, all of these things? I feel like we were talking about yesterday in a, in another call, right, about some of the color palette choices. Like, oh, yeah. why are they, of all of the, like, 
colors to put together that just and I feel like that's how it's been every season. There were right. some cool ones in the Tara season and stuff, but most of the other seasons I don't man. I don't know. Yeah, the Natara season, I agree, felt like the most like thought out and put together skins. Like even the Scorpion season wasn't wasn't that fantastic. No, all the I got so tired. I I literally never fucking want to see the colors yellow and red together, <laughs> like in any capacity. Mortal Kombat or not. Like that is just no. Not after season one of invasions. Like before I feel like I knew better. I'm willing to give everything like, you know, a fair shake. You know, yeah, you can, no, hundred percent. See what it's all about. Yep, and a uh, little man. disappointed, to say the Brutal. least. So, okay, so we went over invasions. And that's us being critical. Let's let's us be, as you mentioned earlier. Let's let's praise something. Let's talk about. Oh, Ur- okay. Let's talk about Ermac. Ermac is coming out. Uh, I, what what were your initial thoughts of that character when you saw him in the story mode for the first time? Like, yay or nay? Well. We saw him before with the DLC trailer, which came out before the, or that was like at the end, like the little teaser for Combat Pack 1 they started putting at the end of the trailers. Yep. And that was our first look at him. That was before the game came out, before story mode, right? So that was like our first look at him. Yep. Uh, And I was like, you know, from the neck down, I think that (laughs) looks pretty fucking sick. My dude needs a mask. I mean, they're definitely going more. They're sticking with the the money sort of like theme. I just, I'm not, he looks, that looks like not like a cool hood, like a reaper or a ninja, like a cool hood is like what Liu Kang wears in that skin that everyone's. Yeah. Like, that looks sick. Uh, I like that a lot. Them, right. Yeah. That is a sick looking hood. That hood that Ermac is wearing is like little red riding hood. <laughs> that looks like, that looks like he's having a bad hair day. And that's something to just like cover up like a handkerchief. He just kind of tied around his hair. So he could go out and buy a dozen eggs or something without embarrassing himself. I can... It does not look cool <laughs> at all. Like, I I don't like it. I'm not calling him anything other than Little Red Riding Hood from this point out. What, if I ever see an Ermac, the, the Little Red Riding Hood. That's actually... But I traditionally am an Ermac enthusiast. Even like, uh, I know people aren't really the fans of like the mummy thing. They like the ninja Ermac better, but I think it's fine. Um, I've always really liked it and like the way they make him talk and I like his lore and I like I love him in MKX. I think he's super cool. I agree. I think that's um, the best iteration of him to be honest. I'm wondering what he's going to play like, what they're going to bring over from MKX. Like there's got to be hints of stuff like um well, he's got to stay especially right? you see the way they've been doing cameos and stuff and like what if they they're going to give him all of the the air combos, the air strings, I bet, where he can levitate and do those strings, like, while oh, levitating 100%. in your face. Yeah, 100%. I, I think that's coming, and I think that Back Forward 2 is coming. What was it called? Like, your, the full screen, the Mystic Wake Up. Oh, um, that the push? Get a version of that? Yeah. The, the Force push. push? I sure hope not. I hated yeah, that the, move. <laughs> the, the, full, the full screen. Full screen, full screen safe armored, armored move. move. Gives get some health back. back. No, fuck that Didn't shit. Didn't it take some of your meter, too, if you got hit? Wasn't there something else about it? I anyway, mean, I think you can, I, I don't if we'll know. get that back. Maybe an iteration of it. I would be some, I, I think the things that we could probably be for sure is the lift. The lift we'll probably see back. Uh, Soul Ball and some... Oh, Lift is a good one, yeah, because that was also an MK11 with the Shang Tsung stuff. Right? Yeah. That was the combo. That was a combo extender. Combo starter Lift thing. So, like, I would like I would be shocked if we did not see the Lift. But mind you, there's a, Quan Chi is missing a lot of his his core moves, like the Ruins and the Trance and that kind of thing. So they could go completely a different way with it. But, I, I mean, if there was one move that would return, I would think it would be the Lift. That just seems well staple to me. <laughs> Why do we think that... So, Quan Chi lost the trance, right? Because they're like, okay, he's going to be a zoner. There's no... He does not need to be restanding people and pulling them in or being right. plus, you know, stuff like that. He can just knock them away and set up whatever. So, I understand why that's not there. And runes, they basically turned into portals. Right. Um, That fit with the appendages, the, the Cthulhu stuff that he's got going on, right? Yeah. Do you think he's going to have his teleport? Because it's a teleport character, right? I would be shocked if he didn't, to be honest. Um, and again, another staple move. Those, those would be the two that I'd say for sure. Like, and and I feel like he would have like some sort of a soul ball just to have a projectile kind of idea. But I mean, do you really need one if you have a teleport? Yeah, I don't really know. No, but do you think he'll have like a a mechanic 
like uh, building the souls, like the master of souls stuff. That would be cool. Like he can stack up to three the way that like Ashra kind of debuffs you in the same way. I love kind that of, like, kind of stuff. Recycle that that mechanic. I I really like that kind of stuff too. Yeah, anything that's like resource management, as long as it's not like, you know, kind of obnoxious. Like in in my opinion, like chameleon is not something that I like because I like to I like to be able to control the resource as well as manage it, and just kind of like timing stuff is not really my thing. But I, like when when fighting games and RPGs collide, and I can debuff my opponent in a fighting game, whether that debuff is a bleed. That debuff is an Enchantress Hex that does whatever version of the Hex you have on them. If that is the the glow from Pyro, you know, in an MKX that <clears throat> gives the enhanced uh, properties for Fireball and things like that, I love that sort of stuff. Yeah, I agree. I Just affecting things in that way, and that's why, that's why Quan Chi is so fun to play, because you guys, like... You got the bone dome, you put them in the bone dome, then you like, pull up the armor portal on them, and you pull up your own portal. If you play her, you have Serena, you could have her just, you know, Old Navy, whatever the friction no is. Right, of Old Navy. <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> just stealing the meter. Oh, I love stuff like that. That's so fun. Right. But I don't really know what they would do with Ermac to kind of have something fun like that. Like, I guess along the lines of, like you said, building souls or whatever to. to level up to maybe like a bigger projectile but they've kind of already done that so like i feel like i feel like if i had to guess about something on that it would be like something to do with jared you know like they're gonna have because he's in the story mode as jared spoiler so story spoilers it's been six months deal with it um so maybe he has like alternate stances or like he's ermac for a bit or then he's jared for a bit i would not like that at all even like different move sets or something like that or i don't really know Man, you keep Jared away from my Ermac. That's what I'm going to say. If they I, do that, I, I, I don't think I would like that. I would have preferred they made Jared his own character for how like deep into the lore. Like Jared is like a pretty pivotal yeah. character in the lore. And then they the just made him into Ermac. Like, you see him and he's walking and he's talking, but he's wearing that same fucking hood. It's like, <laughs> oh my no. god, and I've just got to look at it. It's like you got this character that's so pivotal that's being wait like probably like 20 years, yeah, until like... Maybe more than that, down to like the original Mortal Kombat games, where it's like, it's, it's, this is where we finally see him, and that's that's what he is. Like, that's that's his debut on the MK scene as like a character. Yeah, like, it was, cool. it was written well. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked a little weird to me. It, it was different. It's the hood. It's the hood. It's, it's, it's the hood. Just lose lose the hood. I would love to have seen King Jared his own standalone character. And maybe we will. Maybe the maybe the story was just hinting at something like that, you know, that he'll be a DLC or I would love for him to be a full character. I don't know if he being a cameo would not really do him justice in my opinion. I'd like to finally see him fleshed out as a character, you know, have his own kind of move set, maybe like a special weapon or something like that. You know how they like to get like retro and they do like throwbacks for characters sometimes. Uh we just saw like a litany of it with Janet. Um you think they'll give Ermac like his down four from MKX? Oh, that let was it, so let obnoxious. Keep haunting people, <laughs> things like that that we just kind of like finally we're like, okay, we've moved past this, don't need that anymore, and then bam, in your face, there it is again, down four. Right, but Ur Ermac special in that he can jump cancel his down four if it hits the opponent as an end. <laughs> oh my! I can God. see it now. <laughs> you are way more creative with this stuff than I am. I will, like, what do you think he's going to look like as far as skins go? Like, obviously, we saw he has, like, the mummy skin. I'm assuming he'll probably have, like, the classic ninja skin. Hopefully, it's better than Sub-Zero's that, like, looks like it's literally body paint. That was so bad. Could you, I could can't... you imagine? Could you imagine literally any other character or just any character in that same outfit? It's just so silly. It's, it looks so bad. It's an iconic <laughs> outfit, too. It really sucks that it's that bad. Like, <laughs> I just... I don't think that the... The like legacy outfits, I don't think they ever looked good. MK2 skins that were in MKX for the female ninjas, yeah, I didn't think any of those looked good. Um, the actually more combat 11, the UMK3 skins they did for the female ninjas, like Scarlet, and those, I'll take so I'll take it back. Those, those look fucking awesome, yeah, those, those look, sick. look super sick, but I don't really think that the the old skins really look good. I don't feel like they make enough of an effort, like texture wise and stuff to make them look cool and modern and edgy. It always ends up looking like, you know, the same sort of material they make football shoulder pads out of, you know, things. 
Do you think that's what, like by just, design like, though? And stuff. You think that's like by design Maybe. that like they did, I don't they think it want it to be good. simple? It's just it's too much as seeing something in HD that shouldn't be in HD. The reason why it was acceptable to look that way is because of like the lower resolution, the way it's presented, the the the, the saturation or overexposure or the way that just you know we looked at things on a CRT TV and when things were fucking 64 bit or 128 bit and now they're in 4K and that looks like shit. I'm sorry. Like it just looks like plastic. <laughs> Nostalgia just, doesn't always you've uh, gotta, if, convert well. If you're going to bring it back in that sort of capacity, it's still got to also like hold up. But I don't feel like they they do other than those MK11 ones that I mentioned. That Scarlet one's like one of my favorite. That's a good ever. one. Scarlet was such a good character in that game. I'm, I'm like, just her design, the voice, voice actress, like her gear, everything was so cool. Sucked that she was low tier. You never really saw her because they did a really good job with that character. I love her. I think she played the way that they conceptualized that game. Uh, I think she probably she played like really well, but what the game turned into through just like receiving feedback or the way they patched it or the way that it just grew and they didn't know what it was going to based on because you don't really know how people are going to be playing. Right, you can try to QA stuff and play test stuff, yeah, but that's it's not true. Against, that's like the masses. And whatever the game turned into, I don't feel like she played as well. They did do some things to try to like you know to like bring her up, but it was it's like one of those things. It's like it's not like she's bad. There's just characters that with way less effort can you know do what she does not even supposed to do does just like still win right like you just have you it's just like one of those you have to like really like the character to and like put in work with that character she's not like picking up a Liu Kang and doing forward four three sort of stuff and I remember we played once and like you're kind of explaining all the gaps that she had and whatnot. And then you were, you were yelling at one point. You're like, everything she does gets freaking up to whatever, like every single thing. And I'm like, that's actually fair. That's uh, and I feel like that was just like one of the, her big flaws is like the mechanics of that game. Yeah, just... How people complain about gaps for like sub zero right now. Right. If it's not forward one, two, literally everything that he has has a gap. Right. And that's, Scarlet, <laughs> okay, <love> MK11, <laughs> you know, same sort of thing. And there's, I wonder why they that's do the that. That's the thing about MK11 is like that's part of like the mind game and the, the way you can flawless slot block people out of like hit advantage and so I like the mind games are just like annoying. It's not, like not a fun way to play. I think it was like a lot of people's gripe with that that game, right? It's just literally exhausting <laughs> to have to like keep track of like six wake up options and are they going to meet a burn it on block or whatever, which is actually going to punish me if I try it. It's like what, how we're complaining about grenades and stuff like that now. Right. That's just right. like what meter burn moves are like, am I going to meter burn it and punishing you for trying to punish too early? Or, um, are you going to respect the meter burn? And then I'm going to get away with these insanely punishable negative frames. Right. But you're too afraid to push a button because I've got a bar meter. And you know, I, I don't, I don't feel like people like that. And I think that like that's an example of them kind of mixing their two franchises together. Like, leave the meter burn with injustice and have the EX moves be for Mortal Kombat. Like, you, you tried it with MK11, wasn't really a, a hit. That's fine. Just leave that in the past. I think that's kind of well, what they're done here. So. MK MKX too, right? And MKX have uh, mind games with meter burn moves. Yeah, but only specific moves though. Like Quan's Rune was one of them that you could like delay it and like EX it afterwards which was also a combo launcher, which is very obnoxious, and also plus eight on block, which was very obnoxious. But that's what that game was, right? It was just obnoxious from start to finish. That's what MKX was. And that's why, like, I, I can play it very, very casually, but I play it for too long, and that just guessing wrong twice into my health bar is not my idea of fun. All right, so for our viewers at home, and definitely not for me, because I obviously know the answer to this question, how are you making the distinction when you say meter burn versus EX? Is it the way that you input it or is it a property of the, the move? What do you think is the, the big distinction there other than just the, the nomenclature, right? Because we do call it uh, meter burn. They do call it meter burn literally in Injustice and it's called enhanced and EX is the short for that, right? But yeah. What do you think is the distinction? So in my mind and from my experience, what I've seen is enhanced is something that you have to commit to when you press the attack button. You press the attack button and in my case, the right trigger at the same time to EX it. 
a meter burn move would be something that you've pressed afterwards. Sometimes reactable, sometimes not. Firestorms, molten trap would be an idea of something like I do it, I see that it hits, I meter burn it so I can get the combo. I do it, I see that it didn't hit, so then I just keep my meter to myself uh, for the next time that I'm going to do it. And, and there are some instances of that in the MK, like you were saying, like with, um, like I mentioned earlier with Quan's Ruin and stuff like that. But I feel like in MK1. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll have a pause. Yeah, MK11. Yeah, MK11's full of shit like that, right? Like spawns projectile and, you know, whatever. That was obnoxious. Like, yeah. So that's kind of how I would, I would define the difference between the two. And okay. I don't really know that I've seen much of that in MK1, question mark. I haven't played around with the whole cast, but I'd, I don't think there's too much. Um, or if any meter burn moves in this game, I think that's left up to cameos for the most part. That's kind of only what I'm the only thing I can think of where because you do have to commit to it right up front. There's not like a delay thing unless you're using meter to extend something. That's usually on hit, hit right? That and spending resources for damage or something, not like you know a, a mix up or whatever. Right. I can't think of anything, but I feel like cameos feel that spot now. The more we talk about it, it's just kind of like, well, that's what we're using cameos for. So that's why they didn't... So, yeah, Mortal Kombat 1 was more of a meter burn game, not an EX game. And now the old input's back and the commitment's back. And I've been playing Leverless, like I said, right? And I've been noticing you have to hit... I have to hit block before the face button. If I'm doing back forward 1 EX, I need to do back forward then tap block or hold block and then hit one. Like that button has to come first, I feel like. That's interesting. I actually didn't... Uh, if I try to do it reverse, that. the regular one comes out. And if I try to hit it at the same time, I feel like it's too hard to do that for me because I'm a caveman. And then I always just get the non-EX one. That seems like a weird choice to, to change the input system that drastically. In my opinion. I don't even know how it works. That's just something that I just noticed, like how I just... I've always had a problem with the EX ones, ones where you have to hit the button at the same time. I've always hated it. Um, but now it's not so bad, like on pad and stuff. But I've thought about getting a leverless one. Like, I mean, some people might know it is called Hitbox, but Hitbox is a brand name. So it's basically there's no sticks or anything on. It's just all buttons. It feels like it'd be a lot easier on my wrists and hands and everything as I'm also getting to caveman status, something that I'm starting to think about anyways. I did try and I learn like it. Point. Like I'm just too hard. I'm too much of a masher on pad. And like the PS4, or the PS5 pad, I weighs like three times as much as the PS4 pad. And when I'm like mashing on the D-pad and stuff, it's that much more weight that's just pushing back underneath like my thumb. And I feel like it turns my thumbs to like ground beef. Yes. So I just was trying to get something a little bit different ergo ergonomically, and it's just kind of like made me realize all of the input errors I've been making on pad, which is so much easier to see what the problems were. PS5 controller is garbage. Even, I even modded the D-pad on it, too, and I still get all sorts of weird shit. So, like, it's just in general, that pad is, is garbage. And one of the first things I did when I was modding it was take out that stupid internal microphone. Like, that yeah, is yeah. I did so, that too. so obnoxious. But you can get one of those, those how to 42s that everyone's talking about right now. Like, you can get a liverless controller for less money than a PlayStation 5 controller right now. It's like 65 bucks or something. I'll have to look into that for sure. It'd probably help my my inputs and my mashing. But, I'd, you know, and I have the same, we've talked about this. I have the same thing that everybody else has is that up button is so weird being where it is. Like You I get used to it. It's like you just had the only way past that obstacle is through it. And it just takes a little bit of muscle memory. It's no different than I would say trying stick for the trying stick when you're just used to pad or something you're just kind of like uncomfortable at first it gives you you know you just kind of have to you do you trust everybody has that obstacle man i i commend anyone who's able to go back from like back to block to like block button fighting games on the same pad like that's crazy i tried to play injustice 2 yesterday with my pad and like i was tapping that block button every two seconds and just being yep. like getting blown up so that's i had to switch to to the stick which is why, if I'm going to play those two games interchangeably, I'm going to have a different method so I don't accidentally go back to block when I'm playing MK and I don't accidentally press the block button when I'm playing Justice. So, Man, I'm always the same button. My block button on my controller is like my parry button in Street Fighter VI, and it's meter burn button in Injustice 2. Right. So I'm like, no matter, I played 
both FK1 and Injustice 2 yesterday, and it just took me forever to stop hitting that button to block. I like actually start adjusting to the back to block. Then by the time I was playing Mortal Kombat, it took me about the same amount of time to start hitting the block button again. I couldn't figure <laughs> out. I was like, I was like, Jesus Christ, is that an overhead? I was like, no, I'm just like not blocking because I'm <laughs> walking backwards and not hitting the button. But <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just I'm I'm slow. I can't jump between games like that. I feel like that's it. I feel like we covered it all. Um... Yeah, thanks for joining me, Hater. As always, always good to sit down a little conversation, you know, one on one this time. Yeah, I mean, I've got and I've got no problem being a cynic, right? But I don't want to come off as that guy either, and I try not to be too 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 hard on any of that stuff. I don't want to add to the dog pile, but I think it is important to talk about. Yeah, that that life, space so. is that's Tom Brady's got that space on lock. We don't need to <laughs> we don't need to challenge him for that. I, I I think it'll get better. I um I kind of think that too. Uh, a peace, more peaceful time is just around the corner, I will say. But yes, uh, that's going to be it for us. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Really appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like because it really helps me out. And subscribe if you haven't because I make new videos almost every single day and podcasts every once in a while. Hashtag Bonehawks, all that stuff. And we'll see all you Bonehawks in the next video. Yeah. Accept your death.